Hi folks, I've been really busy in my shed making all kinds of Viking themed stuff. For my upcoming birthday party, uh, we're going to have a bit of a, a Viking theme in it. And I've made, you know, Viking staffs, I've made chandeliers and candelabras, shields, axes, all kinds of stuff. I've even made a really large carved Odin. So join me if you want to see me making this stuff. My, uh, my wife thinks I've gone Viking mad. Actually, in some places in Europe, I think they pronounce the V like an F. So you could say that I've gone Viking mad. So skull. I've started making some um, Viking stuff and I'm starting with this uh, dragon head for the bow of this particular boat that I've got hanging up here. So this boat here, um, I'm thinking that I'll mount that to the uh, front of that and I'll do a, a, a tail end as well. And I'm thinking maybe we'll put our beer and stuff like that in the canoe um, and that'll be part of the, the whole theme. We're also doing a whole bunch of uh, shields and uh, various other Viking paraphernalia that we'll be uh, uh, showing in further videos. Battle axes. <laughs> Christine has been uh, painting them for me and I think they look excellent. So they're very quick and easy to make. The, uh, the bosses in the centre are made from these pie dishes which uh, cost less than a dollar each and uh, I simply uh, beat the, the center out and uh, make it round and uh, they, they look really good. Um, I'll be showing you how I make these too. So here's the uh, pie dish and I've hollowed this out using the ball gouge, just fairly rough, um, but in the curve that I want and uh, I'll use a big ball peen hammer first. Next, I'll put that onto a ball. I'm using an old tow bar and I'll beat that smoother. What I'm doing now is uh, making a uh, Viking chandelier. So I've just drawn a uh, profile for a Viking boat and I've just started cutting it out. Then I'm making a bunch of uprights which will be mounted along it and on that mounted on that will be shields and then a, uh, a thing for a candle. So the a row of four of these and then the whole thing hanging by a chain. So a little bit of turning required but uh, mostly I'm just making it out of ply. Unfortunately, the uh, small bandsaw blades that uh, I need to cut this out are all broken and I can't get them from Perth for a couple of days. So I'm having to use a jigsaw, which is not my favourite tool, but uh, at least it gets me out of trouble in this situation. So.
olive wood, which turns quite nicely. And this will be the shields on the uh, sides of the, what I was calling a chandelier, but it's more likely to be a candelabra now because I'm gonna make a stand for one of them at least. So here's the basic chandelier or candelabra. It's, uh, it's just friction fitted together so it can fold down flat. And uh, Christine's gonna paint it now for me. When it's finished, it can either be hung by a couple of chains from either corner, so it's a chandelier, or maybe on a stand, it could be like a candelabra. There it is, just before painting. This is the uh, the root or burl end of a, uh, a peppermint tree. Apparently when they glow in, grow in uh, hard clay ground, they often go into bulbs like this. I thought it'd make a good, uh, a good knob for the top of a walking stick. I think I can see some faces in there. So I'll see how that goes. I filled it here with uh, an epoxy mixed with some of the sawdust so that it's all nice and even. And what I've decided to do is to carve a Viking helmet and a Viking head here. And then this will be narrowed down and join onto a staff. So it'll be a staff with a, with a Viking head. And he'll have a moustache and I noticed this blemish here so that can be just where the moustache and, and bottom of his nose is. So something like that. I'll just turn it down a little bit more and get it smoother and then we'll start to carve it. I used a blowtorch just to blacken the stitching here. I forgot to film that. Basically just to highlight the, the, the stitching pattern on there. Um, you will have seen me using the copper wire, just fitting it to the various spots, just to add a little bit of copper color to it. I also added little copper trims with the copper wire up around the helmet. And it'll make a nice prop in our party. <laughs> I'm thinking of using this to carve a bit of a, a bit of a totem <laughs> or a, uh, a, I don't know, maybe an Odin or a, uh, a Viking head or something like that. I've never done this sort of thing before. I'm not a chainsaw carver and I've only got a small electric chainsaw, so <laughs> I'll see how I go. Should be interesting. First thing to do will be to get the bark off with my trusty machete. I was looking, I was looking for something that uh, relatively easy, <laughs> um, and I've chosen this picture, this um, uh, head of Odin, um, because of my Viking heritage. Inkster name is a, Inkster is a Viking name, so I thought I'd carve this one of Odin and see how that turns out. I can't 
believe it, I can't find an industrial wood carver in my shed. So I've got, uh, got a mini grinder with a mini industrial blade, which I think will be good for doing a lot of this anyway. I thought I'd pin this up here so I can view it at any time. While well, I used a chainsaw for removing bulk areas, I very quickly found that the mini carver was much better for getting in and carving uh, detail, allowing me to cut curves, etc. So what I've done now, I've taken a bit off the top and I've decided to carve the, e the sorry, the, uh, the birds, which are uh, ravens, and I'm, I'm going to carve them sort of freestanding above it and do, the, do it in much more detail. So I'll just get stuck into that. Removing bulk of wood, you know, just slicing with the chainsaw is a really good way. But for a lot of the shaping, um, I'm noticing that the most enjoyable is to use the turbo plane on the power carving unit because with the propeller in there and the fan, it's directing all of the shavings straight down here so that when I use some of the other cutting tools, the shavings are coming at me in various different directions. So this guard really works really well for a lot of the bulk shaping. And, and uh, the exhaust is coming out beautifully down the bottom here and not in my face, which does make it a lot more pleasant. Using the precision barrel carver allows me to cut very deep and square and plane the bottom of the lower sections. I use the power chisel for doing all of the engraving work and I also found the deep V and the 90 degree V very useful in squaring edges and defining some of the areas. Too much rain so I've uh, moved it into my shed with great difficulty. Um, so I'll just continue doing the, uh, the detail. I might, I might put some black in where I'm doing this um, engraving and then when I sand it back that should be highlighted. Right. Black into some of the deeper spots just to highlight the image um, and uh, now I intend to put some uh, boiled linseed oil on it and uh, and then cover it with uh, decking oil because this is going to be outside and it means if I'm going to keep it I'll, I'll need to oil it every year or two but that's not a big deal.
right, time for a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a turboplane here, and this is how it works. I'm gonna ask you a question, and you have to answer it in the chat section of this premiere video. So, the question is, how many teeth does the turboplane have? Okay, if you answer it in the chat section of this video, then uh, you may win a prize. Now, uh, I know a lot of people are gonna be asking me what tools I use for what when I did this. Um, uh, they usually do after these videos. So, uh, what I'll do is just quickly go through them so that it's nice and clear. As you know, I did the bulk carving using the uh, electric chainsaw to just cut away blocks, etc. And I did go to use the chainsaw to do a bit of detail, but very quickly found it's very bulky and you're very far away from it. So, I then turned to the mini grinder which is uh, this one here. This is the new mini grinder, which has got a double V belt, so it's much stronger. Um, it doesn't slip, and uh, it's got a carbide teeth uh, blade called the, uh, called the Mini Pro, I think. And um, yeah, so it's got nice rounded carbide teeth and does a very smooth cut, and you can turn and go around corners. So I did most of the detail work using the mini grinder. Um, and then what I need to do to take away more bulk, so I was using the turbo plane. Um, I didn't have the sanding disc on, so I had the turbo plane on the power carving unit. And the beauty of that is that I had the dust, uh, I didn't have dust extraction, but I had the, the tube on, it's got the propeller in it. And so the chips would go down there and it was one of the more pleasant tools for using, uh, for doing a lot of the bulk shaping. Um, and then when I put the sanding disc on uh, to finish it off, if, I bring, if I'm outside, I don't worry so much about dust extraction, but I always make sure I wear a mask. Here's the Arbitec mask with the replaceable filters in it. These are very good. Um, so, uh, yeah, but if I'm in, inside, I will use it with dust extraction. And then, of course, the very uh, the tighter detail, the lettering and uh, all of these grooves, etc. I did all with the power chisel, with various chisels, mostly the 60 degree V or a 90 degree V, a much bigger one. And that's a, a really easy tool to use. Literally, you just draw on it and then just follow it with the chisels. So it's very, very easy. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, it's coated now in uh, boiled linseed oil. And I'll let that soak in. Boiled linseed oil will harden. And then I'll put um, a, uh, a decking oil on it, which has a UV inhibitor in it because it's going to be outside. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed.